Here you can see I have a solid body. This also could be surfaces. This body has no history whatsoever. Now, this may be a part that needs to be formed. This may be a part that needs to be forged, cast, whatever that process is. And because of these tight little corners like this, there may be an issue with how material flows. So one of the things in the olden days you'd have to do is you'd have to go in there and build these big fancy transition surfaces and trim away this little ball. Again, this has no history. If this did have history, you may be able to go in there and modify the edge fillet. Um, the edge blend does have a very powerful tool that if you were to pick three edges as such and you were going in and let's go to our corner setback and select that point you'll notice that I get these corner setbacks but again it's limited to picking at least three fillets coming into that corner uh, and you can go four, you can go five, you can go for a higher amount and this is again with a model that has history so you have the setback within the filleting tool has some limitations but is extremely powerful but again here I have a body with no history so what I need to do is I need to go in there and create a blend corner to remove this area and the way this blend corner works is you come in and you specify the first blend where you specify an isoparametric curve gets dropped in this is just an isoparametric curve somewhere along that face and wherever you happen to select is where it goes to once I have that selected I'll middle mouse button to go to the next I'll pick that face you'll notice that I'm just bridging over the top of this ball corner what ends up happening is the system sets up these transition curves these transition curves now allow me to determine how these corners look. I'm going to pull this curve out. You'll notice I have a handle there that I'm allowed to pull this out with. And then I can adjust the magnitude for each one of these ends. Now here I only have two selected. If I want to, I'll use my middle mouse button. I'm going to come in and specify a third face. And again, I'm going to pick here you'll notice the curve that I uh, gets created right where I select and this is where the tool can be a little uh, tricky for some people you have these three arrows now and you have to make sure that these directions are pointed in such a way where the start and end points are able to make a nice transition you can see this start point runs all the way to the start point up here and that's not what we want so all we need to do is reverse this arrow just simply double click on it or you can click on it and switch using this icon over here as well in this case I have three faces selected and now that I have three faces you know here are my three limit curves on those faces again I can move these around and once again I have the ability to modify those curved transitions on those faces. You'll notice the red one is the one that I'm currently working on. So whichever curve is highlighted red, if I go to blend curve three off of that surface, I can go to two, you can see which surfaces are highlighted. I can also specify if I don't want to use an actual isoparm off of the surface I can use a planar intersection it'll ask me to make a plane and it'll intersect that plane with that blend I'm perfectly content using the isoparms it usually does an excellent job simply using the isoparametric curves here you have uh, tangency start so uh, or in, in tangencies this is, these are just limit curves and you can see what happens with the shape so rather than actually being tangent to my limit curve or, or to my start object, it is now coming out perpendicular. 
And again, I can control that shape with these handlebars. Very powerful tool. It can do an incredible amount. If you go down into shape control, let me get rid of transition curves for now, I can change this to G2 curvature. So now I have a curvature coming across these blends. I can enable patch fullness control, which gives me this arrow. And with the patch fullness control, I can add more of a peak or reduce that peak. And the settings are just simply patch and apart, allow transition in my tolerances, that's all. I'm going to select OK. I'm going to create my blend corner. Now if I come in to modify this blend corner, what I want you to notice is that I am now kind of stuck. This is the limit of the blend corner tool. You don't have a lot of history on the tool per se. So if I come in here and double click on it, you'll notice that my blend curves, nothing. I have my transition curves. If I, if I try to move these, you'll notice that I'll select OK. And there goes the change. So what ends up happening is once I select OK on the tool, the modification of said tool is, uh, gets a little bit difficult, can be a little tricky. One thing that you cannot do is, is once it's created, you cannot go in here and remove one of these faces. You're kind of stuck with it. So it is an incredibly powerful tool. You can do quite a bit with it, but it has a little limitation when you go to make a modification to the end surface. And if you run into an area where, you know what, I just I don't want to deal with it, I can just simply delete it and put it back in. Again, you can do it on a fully parametric models, or in this case, as you see here, a non-parametric model. So each one of these blend corners is now uh, basically, it's up to you what that shape control is, getting it right, uh, the first go, um, again, you, you still have some control here. If I modify this offset, you'll notice that this value still drives. That offset value, you can see here, this is going to sink, or now it'll grow a little taller. So you still have the parameters, but it's not as if you were modifying it um, when you were um, making the actual blend corner. You lose some of that dynamic capability. So it's just a warning to you. If you do you choose to use the tool, the mo most of the modifications you're going to make are going to be somewhere in this window. It's um, it gives you all of the capabilities for the modifications, but um, it can be a little difficult figuring out what goes to where. Again, I recommend using it when you get stuck into those uh, paint yourself into a corner or if. The tooling shop comes back and says, hey, we need to uh, smooth this area out. We can't forge it. We can't form it, whatever that may be. So good tool, has a little bit of a limitation. Um, just be careful with that limitation, and you should be good.